a very warm welcome to everyone who's watching. Now, programmatic advertising can be considered what quantum mechanics is for physics. Everybody talks about it, but very few understand it well. But we have a very special guest here with us who has a deep understanding of the domain. Now, he's going to tell us why programmatic advertising has become the be all and end all of the digital world and for brands and why DSPs launched by e-commerce platforms have an edge over the others. Now, let me welcome, welcome Sankal Mehrotra, VP Monetization of Flipkart. Hi, Sankal. Hey, Nita. Great to be here. Thanks a lot for having me over. Glad to have you. Now, now Sankal, India is one of the fastest growing programmatic advertising markets in the world. Now, earlier, the challenge for its growth was that uh, digital consumed a very small part of the ad buy. Now, but in the past two years, courtesy the pandemic, uh, now we've seen it grown by leaps and bounds. Yeah. Now, I'd like to really know from you, uh, you know, how programmatic advertising as a discipline has used that tailwind to its advantage. Got it. Great question, Nita, and it'd be awesome to kick off the discussion with this, right? Uh, let's talk about the overall digital market uh, to begin with, right? There are multiple numbers that are there for the market, right? There are some estimates that put the market at about 19,000 crores, which is for 2021, right? Uh, 2022 is set to grow to about 23, 24,000 odd crores, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think most of these numbers, though, uh, vastly underestimate what the real market size is, right? Uh, from our data triangulations, uh, I would stick my neck out and say in the last year, which is in 2021, the digital advertising market might have already breached uh, 30,000 crores, right? There's mm -hmm. a much part of the market. Uh, you have your uh, SMEs and SMEs who are spending, right, which perhaps is not even getting captured. Uh, lots of money are going behind, uh, let's say, a lot of profiles with the downloads, etc., right, which might not even be getting captured. So if you think about digital as an overall opportunity, it is much larger than what is uh, perhaps being reported. And in case the market is, uh, let's say, 30 or 1,000, it will be north of 35 of the total ad right? So it's a very large opportunity at this point of time, and it's only set to grow, right? As internet penetration keeps on rising in the country, as more and more people start to start their online journeys through mobile, the share of digital spends is only going to increase because as users move, the brands will too, right? So that's about the overall. Now, mm -hmm. Within digital, you have multiple segments, right? Typically, we try and break up the market as search, social, uh, video, uh, display, and, and, and there's this entire commerce advertising space, right? Which is getting, um, I would say, there are multiple people who are actually playing in this domain. There's us, there's our competition, uh, there's phone pay, there's Paytm, there's Nike, there's Mintra, so many players who are coming up, right? So the entire commerce advertising space is, is also getting extremely active and there is a huge amount of investment that is not going down in this space too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, just, just going back to also what you had asked about programmatic, right? Now, the of programmatic really is, is providing accuracy and efficiency at scale, right? Mm -hmm. The entire digital world is, is pivoting more and more towards performance. I'm not saying I, I, uh, I fully agree <laughs> to... <laughs> movement of migration but it is uh, it is pivoting more and more towards that uh, you know and 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 there are sectors and there are verticals which are relying very heavily on programmatic quality you think of a vertical like gaming you think about all consumer tech you think about all tech fintech dfsi or all of these categories are very very big on programmatic already and the reason is really quite simple you know how do you reach the most relevant audience at scale right so I think this trend is only going to grow. The mm -hmm. market is already moving in a direction where um, you know numbers are set to go. Programmatic makes immense sense for a lot of brands and categories, right? And and you'll see more adoption happening on it in the coming years. Like you mentioned, I think the investment is already huge and growing yeah. by the day, and for yeah. the right reasons. I mean, yeah. I think it's a big boon because uh, apart from saving time on manual insertion, you can actually measure the campaign performance, uh, you know, real time, as opposed to waiting till the fag end of the campaign to figure out whether it was successful or not. So yeah. that's, that's a huge opportunity uh, there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, you are an integral part of the programmatic advertising ecosystem today. You know, in February, you launched a, a custom-built demand-side platform uh, in partnership with MediaMan, 
Uh, yeah. Tell me, how was the reception uh, from the market so far? Yeah. Uh, see, I mean, again, I'll just take a step out, right? Mm -hmm. and talk about, uh, the thesis of us doing uh, a DSP in the first place, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Think about it. Uh, users take a lot of actions on a destination such as Flipkart, right? They browse through multiple categories. Uh, they wish list items. They add things to cart. Uh, they use multiple payment methods and so many other things right now we are able to churn all of these actions into some insights right now what we are essentially trying to do is understand user intent in in some way right uh, really understand what is the user trying to uh, achieve attain etc and if you think of us as a platform a job that we do well is to hyper personalize right so when users come on their part your experience on Flipkart versus my experience on Flipkart is very different uh, or could be very different, right? Uh, the kind of merchandising that you might see versus might Absolutely. The recommendations that you're going to get, all of that is different, right? Now we use all of these insights to show ads on platform, right? What we do is build a lot of these anonymized cohorts and use these insights to show ads on the platform. We've actually just taken that narrative forward, right? Uh, the cohorts that we use to target users uh, on Flipkart, and I don't like the word, or let's say is to surface relevant content uh, to our users on platform, are the cohorts that we use, uh, you know, on our DSP too, right? So irrespective of whether you retail on Flipkart today, or you do not, you can use all of that intelligence to surface the right kind of computation to the right kind of user. An example, if I were to think of, let's say, BFSI as a category, right? Mm -hmm. We have an understanding of which customers are, let's say, cash customers, which customers are uh, using a particular type of credit card, who's using debit card, who might be on UPI, and dependent on the product that you have. Uh, you can choose one of these cohorts to show the right kind of bag to the user, irrespective of where they are, um, you know, uh, off platform, right? So, mm -hmm. really, is the thesis of our DSP, right? Uh, it's early days, right? It's just been about seven or eight months, and and it's a market uh, which uh, uh, which, like we are saying, is set to grow. The architecture or the thesis of having this DSP is is fundamentally very strong. We've seen month on month growth. We are growing quarter on quarter. But you know, if if I have to simplify what you said, you know, or, or maybe ask you in a very direct sort of a way, you know, there are so many yeah. DSPs out there yeah. in the market. Yeah. If, uh, so I think there are two ways of going about it. One, you can go through scale, like the number of people that you can, you know, actually reach out sure. to, or maybe the richness of the data. Uh, you know, yeah. you might have lesser number of people, yeah. but you know, the data that you have on them is really rich. So in this case, which category would uh, the Flipkart uh, DSP be? Uh, depth very clearly, right? Okay. Um, you know, so let me just uh, again try and break it down, right? So uh, you can get limitless uh, inventory uh, through multiple supply sources, right? Mm -hmm. What makes a difference is the kind of layering that you can do on top of that supply, right? Where you starting focus, where you start to focus more and more on mm -hmm. on right uh, based on your brand based on your uh, customer based on the goals that you're targeting right and again mm -hmm. back to the point i was making in the previous uh, question right we understand user signals well we understand their intent well and again we are able to anonymize them and say okay this is in market cohort for xyz category uh, mm -hmm. cohort, uh, let's say this is a cohort which based on things like the recency of their purchase, the frequency of their purchase, the value of their purchase, you can have an RFM kind of a segment. Um, you can say this is a code that has browsed, uh, let's say, diapers, and hence you might want to show a toy ad. So, so you know, all of that intelligence is today uh, available on our DSP, right? So, uh, to your question, what is that we differentiate ourselves on? It is the depth of what we are able to provide to our advertisers. And I think another advantage is you're actually getting consumers closer to the purchase cycle. So you know their behavior much better than any other, you know, website. I mean, any other DSP could basically. Is, is... Yeah, I would, I would, I would think so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that really goes back to the point of uh, trying to surface the right kind of communication to the right kind of user and avoiding as much spillage as you can, right? So mm -hmm. I think that is exactly the position that we want to take and that is exactly what we're trying to do. And you know, let's come to the consumer point of view. Now, you know, there is more competition than ever to reach consumers today and, you know, resonate with their niche interests and habits. 
uh, yeah. they are also much more tech savvy and better informed about what's available out there in the market so yeah. how programmatic this uh, advertising and your dsp specifically beneficial for the new age consumer yeah see think of advertising uh, as a spectrum right uh, advertising is uh, really you can think of it as a gradient right as customers uh, mm -hmm. your intent can perhaps be broken down into four parts right uh, there are times when you have your intent which is very very clear so call it strong intent right there are times when you have latent intent there are times when you have nascent intent and there are times when there is a uh, new intent uh, that is to be created right advertising obviously straddles all of this right now for someone with a very strong intent right typically what that customer will do is go search for it uh, right maybe for it uh, you can search on a horizontal or if it is a product query you will perhaps come to a destination so this is part right the job of advertising when a customer has strong intent is is really to surface the selection that the user is looking for right so advertising has a role to play there too right um, when you think of intent intent um, you know it's advertising can play the job of reminding right uh, and rekindling their interest so to say right mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to nascent intent perhaps you can amplify right a uh, showcase them products and services which are based on their prior activity and multiple behavioral signals and when it comes to you know let's say new intent you can inspire right you can show things that they might need but they haven't pursued it themselves right so i think uh with with the customer being uh, digitally savvy digitally uh, smart it's not that advertising does not have a role to play uh, i think the need for advertising gets pronounced depend on what part of the gradient the customer might be in right and again programmatic is meaningful uh, in this environment because it allows the right kind of content to be surfaced to the right kind of user at the right point of time dependent on what their intent uh, is and right. on where they are right so uh, I think advertising has a role to play. It will continue to have a role to play. <laughs> you know that you see, you said something very interesting. You spoke about you know how advertising can be a reminder. You know, and yeah. as soon as somebody talks about reminder, I think of retargeted ads. You know, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you say, I mean, they're a nuisance. Of course, they're effective. Uh, but you know, a DSP can do a lot more. You know, it can yeah. literally adapt to various uh, types of display advertising campaigns, like you mentioned, catering to the various moods of the consumer at that point in time. Can you elaborate what kind of specific solutions you have for the different sets of uh, brands and advertisers that you have on Flipkart? Yes, so I'll break it up into two components. There are things that on deck, and there are things that we do off deck, right? Uh, when I say on deck, I mean our assets like our app, M site, uh, mm -hmm. etc. There is work that we do with them. Then there are things that we do off deck, right? Uh, on deck we largely cater to endemic brands and sellers and there are multiple solutions that are available right mm -hmm. uh, we can showcase ads to them uh, when they are on the home page we can showcase ads to them when they are on, on various category pages we can showcase ads to them when they are towards the end of their shopping journey or towards the closure of their shopping fund right and there are multiple experiences uh, within that. There are large format displays, there are shopping ads, there are things that we call as X2, X3, right? Multiple experiences, uh, which are again very targeted and cohortized, right? Uh, similarly, there are search ads, right? So when a user is searching for something, how do you surface the right kind of selection? What mm -hmm. we pay an over index on, which is actually a big guardrail that we have, is that we maintain very high relevance. So Dependent on what the customer is searching, we want to show very relevant content, right? And not show an unnecessary kind of, um, you know, just an ad. Uh, as you go off deck, right, our DSP is, is an effort, right, uh, where we are trying to use this understanding of the customer that we have on all open internet supplies, right? So our DSP is plugged into multiple supply sources. And we are trying to use all of this understanding to show ads to users uh, anywhere on open internet, right? And it can be for any category, right? So for example, if I think of an endemic brand, uh, any brand, let's say XYZ, right? They are already advertising on the platform, but they definitely would be doing things uh, off platform, right? How can we ensure 
that we provide them uh, a more relevant and a more targeted uh, kind of an opportunity uh, irrespective of the supply that they want to buy out there, right? So that is the opportunity for endemic, right? For non-endemic, it is about using this intelligence, so using these cohorts to create relevance, uh, you know, for their customers whenever they're browsing off platform. So on platform, off platform, both kind of solutions that are available and catering to both endemic and non-endemic kind of products. And, and which are the biggest categories of advertisers here? Yeah, I mean, it will be, see, there are multiple categories on the platform, right? There's handsets, there's electronics, uh, there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's CPG, which is very large, there's fashion. Uh, so there are multiple categories that we are already catering to. Uh, and we've started to make headway with categories like BFSR and auto uh, You know, in the past, in the past one year, there's a lot of foundational work that has been done around it. And we're seeing tremendous traction happen from these categories. Yeah. And you know, and, and another prob another thing uh, that we noticed recently is uh, you know third party data is getting deprecated across the world. You know, yeah. for various reasons, industry channels, privacy, everything else. Uh, yeah. Do you see that as a trigger trigger for Flipkart DSPs to you know uh, go a step further and solve the problems of marketers? You know, first party data like you were talking about. It's really really helpful. Yeah, yeah. No, it will be right. It will happen across. Um, all destinations who have first party data and who are uh, using the signals that they might have available in an anonymized fashion uh, mm -hmm. how to create relevance for their customers and brands will definitely see higher traction uh, in the future, right? Uh, mm -hmm. There are a, a lot of solutions that are being developed. Like, I mean, uh, there are companies that are trying to figure out unified IDs uh, and, and, and all of that, right? So. We'll see a lot of development happening. Uh, so we'll, uh, let's say, uh, third-party cookie deprecation on phone, right. things like what uh, Apple is doing with IDFA deprecation, etc. I think the ecosystem will evolve, right? Uh, but I think the merit or the value that first-party data holders will have is something which is going to get amplified uh, in the near and the long term. There's not to say that they might not the solutions that are created, but yes, uh, anyone with first party data, you will see uh, mm -hmm. brands, uh, you know, migrating the world. Okay, and and one last question, you know, what what are the key trends, other trends that you're seeing in this uh, programmatic advertising space in in for the yeah, next couple of? <laughs> yeah, no, so a couple of things we already spoke about, right? Uh, third right. party deprecation is is one. Uh, the impact of it might be limited in India, but let's say uh, ID for deprecation is another big trend. Uh, mm -hmm. Third thing is this entire interplay between, uh, let's say, walled gardens and open web, right? Uh, so in, in some markets, right, it is observed that uh, there is, let's say, time spent in, in on walled gardens is, is reduced. I'm not sure whether it is true for India or not, but in some geographies it is, right? So there you're seeing the narrative of open web getting more and more pronounced, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And and really, it is it is uh, it's a green space right now, right? Uh, time will tell how this really plays out. But I would say the entire interplay of uh, of world gardens and open web is something that we are going to see playing out in mm -hmm. the coming years, right? Uh, I think CTV as as a trend, um, you know, is is something that is here to stay. Uh, should see more and more uh, advertisers wanting to latch onto it, right? Uh, Last but not the least, and I spoke about it uh, when we started this commerce advertising uh, is going to see disproportionate gains. It will grow faster uh, than the rest of the market, right? And over the next few years, like you said, multiple players in this domain now, right? You'll see a lot of advertisers uh, wanting to migrate as their customers move towards platforms of business, they want to move their advertising dollars too. So yeah, I think that would be the thing I have to say. Super. So if, if we have to sum it up uh, you know, and tell people exactly what Flipkart DSP gives, uh, provides to advertisers, I think it would be like a 360 degree funnel for reaching out to the target audience. I mean. Yes, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it is, yeah, especially for endemic brands, right? I mean, now endemic brands can uh, bring traffic back to the platform and see exactly how their ads have performed, right? So, so yeah, to that in 360 degree view is absolutely right. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Great. Thank you so much, Sankal, for this very enlightening discussion. It really has helped me make progress in my understanding of the programmatic advertising space, and I bet it has helped our viewers as well.
thank you thank you so much uh, for joining us yeah no thanks a lot neeta uh, pleasure having spoken to you greatly enjoyed this conversation thank you